Before we look at anything else, I'm going to talk about the two sequencer modes so that you grasp the differences between them, as these are critical to understanding how simple or how complex OBE sequencer can be. Back in the day, Tom released the mini sequencer, which when hooked up to an 8 voice would trigger the 8th sem, leaving the other 7 to be played. This was beautifully simple and we've taken that as the inspiration for the OBE sequencer when used in SEM8 mode. So when we look at the switch that gives us the option to use either SEM8 or ALL mode, it should come as no surprise that when set to SEM8, OBE mirrors the behaviour of the original, triggering only SEM8, but allowing all other SEMs to be played. When set to all mode though, the sequencer will function according to the reset or continuous settings in the keyboard mode section. If reset is selected, the sequencer will only trigger the SEM that's determined by the position of the start SEM knob. So if we set that to SEM1, the sequencer will only play SEM1 due to reset being selected in the keyboard mode controls. But that's a huge waste of all the other SEMs, because in all sequence mode, we can't play any of the non-sequence SEMs from our external keyboard. So the ideal keyboard mode for use with the poly sequencer mode is continuous. When continuous is selected, the sequencer will cycle through the different SEMs, starting with the SEM determined by the setting of the start SEM knob, and then changing for each sequence step. This makes it possible to create complex sequences where each SEM is set to a different sound. Once you've grasped the difference between SEM8 and ALL modes, everything about OBE Sequencer will fall into place. So with that in mind, let's return to the 8-step note display. The display here indicates the notes in the sequence with the 8 steps working from left to right. There are several ways to input note numbers for each of these steps. The first is to click and hold on the window displaying the note and move the mouse up or down. But there's an easier way too. Turn off the sequencer, play and hold a note on your external keyboard, and while holding that note, click any of the step LEDs. The step will change to that note, and when you're happy with your selection, just turn the sequencer on again. Other note input methods depend on the position of the note input switch. With this switch, it's possible to input notes via an external MIDI keyboard and also to dictate the amount of steps played by the amount of notes held on your external keyboard. In the default position of OFF, no incoming note data from any external keyboard is used to set any sequencer notes. The notes can only be assigned in each of the sequencer note windows via the click and hold method I described before. 
in the set position, the notes you play on your external keyboard set the notes on the corresponding sequencer step. Finally, auto sets the number of steps that the sequencer plays in accordance with the number of notes you hold down on your external keyboard. For example, if you hold down a C major triad, three steps should play and the notes will be C, E and G. Once a sequence has been created by any of the above methods, it's then possible to transpose that sequence via your external MIDI keyboard while it's replaying. In the off position, the keyboard transpose switch is completely inactive and no transpositions will occur. In the on position, when you play a note on your external keyboard, the entire sequence will relatively transpose to that position, i.e. if your sequence is in the key of C, and with the transpose switch in the on position, if you play an F, the entire sequence will transpose to the key of F. When this switch is in the hold mode, the sequencer will not be heard if there are no notes played. However, it will continue to play through each step silently, but will only make a noise when you hold a note down. At this moment, it will play back the sequence transposed according to the held note. OK, returning once again to the sequence steps. You'll notice that underneath these we have gate and velocity knobs. Well, the gate knobs affect the gate time or the duration the note plays for each of the eight steps. Used in conjunction with the SEMS envelope 1, turning the gate knob to the right of centre increases the gate time of the envelope, while turning the gate knob to the left of centre progressively shortens the gate time of the envelope. Gate reset button resets all gate times to their default center position. The velocity knobs affects the level or loudness for each note of the eight steps. Used in conjunction with the SEMS volume knob, turning the velocity knob to the right of center progressively increases the level of the corresponding SEM, while turning the velocity knob to the left of center progressively decreases the level of the corresponding SEM. The velocity reset button resets all velocity knobs to their center position. The sequencer mode knob allows the user to select from five sequencer modes as follows. Forwards mode. Here, the sequence plays the eight steps from left to right repeatedly. Backwards mode. In this mode, the sequence starts at step eight and plays backwards to step one before repeating. Forwards and backwards mode. Here, steps 1 to 8 are played before the sequence reverses, playing steps 8 to 1. Random mode. Plays random steps repeatedly. Chord mode. 
Now this allows you to play a chord and have that affected by the rhythm and octave mode knobs. The sequencer rhythm knob provides a choice of 15 rhythmic templates, each with pre-programmed gait, velocity and swing settings. The sequencer octave knob selects the pitch range of the sequence, ranging from one octave to six octaves for every sequence cycle. The start sem knob determines which sem the sequencer starts with. The default position is sem1, but this, used in conjunction with the sequencer start knob, can lead to really complex patterns being created by different interactions between steps and sem start positions. Moving on to the sequencer steps knob, while OBE sequencer has a maximum of eight steps, via this knob it's possible to change that to anything between a single step and the full eight steps. The sequencer start knob determines the step the sequencer starts on and is especially useful for rejigging a sequence so that it starts on a different downbeat. The default position is to start on step 1, but you can set it to start on any of the 8 steps as indicated in the parameter display window. The default rate is synchronized to the tempo of your host at eighth notes. However, the sequencer rate knob offers 18 alternatives from 16 over 4, i.e. 4 bars, to demi-semi-quavers. The swing knob simply applies a positive or negative swing value to the currently selected sequencer pattern. And finally for the sequencer, we'll look at the sequencer function buttons. The load button allows you to load any saved sequencer note values and associated settings into the currently active sequencer rhythm. The save button allows you to save the currently active sequencer setup, including note values for each step and all other sequencer parameter values. The door sync button, when activated, the sequencer will only play when your door, logic, cubase, etc. is playing. Pressing stop on your door will force the sequencer to stop. Click and hold on this button, then drag it to your door where you'll see a MIDI file.
the sequencer scaling. Now this works in conjunction with the sequencer note values and can be used to very quickly shoehorn a sequence into a particular scale. Just right click on the display and you'll be faced with all the scales in major, minor, melodic and natural options. Selecting the desired scale will move the associated pitches in the sequence steps to the correct note values for that scale. But note, that this only works in conjunction with the notes programmed into the sequencer step windows. Like the lock buttons of the SEMS, this stops the sequence from being edited. And just like the lock button on the SEMS, it means that you can load new patches and still retain the original sequence. And this is really useful for auditioning different patches against a single sequence to see which one best fits your composition.